All right, so uh, so this is a question about using an inside bar, you know, to, to generate a trace signal or a trigger here. So yeah, so we can see on this image here, you know, that we do have some inside bars. Well, hmm, let's see. This is a daily chart, so I guess maybe that is just barely an inside bar. Um, yeah, that one's definitely a, an inside bar there. All right, so we can see a couple of inside bars here. And so when you have an inside bar, you know, you're looking for, at least, you know, in this question here, you know, he's looking for, you know, the next day to either break above or break below. Um, so like the first uh, inside bar here, we can see, right, uh, the market eventually broke below. So that would have generated a sell signal. And then the, the second inside bar, right? Actually, the market broke above and it also broke below, right? So, you know, so what do we do about that? So I did get some clarification on that when you actually get two signals, you know, in one day there. Um, and so basically, it's only the first trade is executed here, right? So it all depends on you know where which side the market broke down to first right so if the market broke to the upside first then you know there only would have been a buy for that day uh, but if it did break down uh short first you know then there would have been just one sell uh, for that day all right um so and then tomorrow we'll We'll set up, we'll finish setting this Bloodhound signal up in Blackbird for tomorrow there. So, yeah, it's going to be pretty straightforward there. Okay, so a couple of things to just note here. And, yeah, yeah, some, some detailed information, you know, worth uh, understanding here about a NinjaTrader strategy, right? So this image shows a long and a short signal right at the same time so you know ninja trader strategies can only trade in one direction at a time right so if you tell your strategy you know buy and sell at the same time um, you know your strategy is basically going to crash um, so because that's not allowed with ninja trader um, and so both blackbird and raven you know um, will you know will look um for a situation like this right so both blackbird and raven if they see a, a buy and a sell signal on the same bar they will just ignore the trade because obviously you know blackbird or raven they're not going to know how to decide you know whether to go long or go short so they just ignore the signal because it's because it's in conflict there so um, yeah, so that's one important thing to kind of note there is, you know, never send your strategy a buy and a sell on the same bar. So, um, yeah. Um, and, you know, and then also, you know, secondarily, to go into a little more detail, you know, if you open up the strategies window, you know, and let's say if you pull, you know, pull up, you know, one of the sample strategies here that comes with Ninja, you know, you'll note that all strategies only have one account um, setting there you know so you can only load one account in for a strategy to trade at a time there you know so that that also you know is part of the reason why a strategy can only trade in one direction um, you know per per trade or per position there so all right so let let me uh, cancel that <clears throat> um, and then also one one other thing to note here, um, right? So um, so when there is an inside bar, right? It's the the bar afterwards that's going to determine the trade direction by you know whether the market breaks up first, you know, for a buy or breaks down first for a sell, right? So in other words. You know, you have to monitor price or you have to monitor the market in real time. So, you know, one thing to note here is, um, right, this this Blackbird here is running 
with the calculate on bar close, right? So in order to monitor, you know, uh, prices in real time, that calculate setting will have to be changed to um, on price change. You know, so that way, so basically what's going to happen is we're going to be generating a signal in real time there. So you, obviously, you know, if you somehow magically had a way, had a way to know whether the market was going to break up or break down on the next bar, you know, then yeah, you could build a system that operates on the bar close, you know, so if you could magically tell that, okay, the market, you know, that this next bar here was going to break down, then you could just send, you know, you could, you know, uh, you could build your bloodhound signals, you know, and send Blackbird a short signal, you know, but uh, since I don't know how to predict what the next bar is going to do, we're going to have to uh, generate a signal in real time, you know, on the actual bar that, you know, that the trade is going to happen in, right? So, okay, so what that means is, you know, for this first question, we're going to have to um, open up Bloodhound. And we're going to have to change, let's see, let's click on Bloodhound. And we're going to have to change the calculate mode to on price change there. All right. So there we go. So um, first thing we need to do is identify an inside bar. All right. Pretty straightforward there. So, um, all right. So let's get Bloodhound open. All right. So with Bloodhound open, actually, the first thing we want to do is uh, generate a file name here. So let's put in today's date for the workshop. There we go. All right. So now, yeah. So now we have a a file name to save all of our our work to. And let's see here. Let me give this a let me give this logic template a name here. Uh, let's see here. There we go. All right, inside bar breakout, you know, because that's that's really what we're looking for. Um, actually, let's clarify this a little bit more. Inside bar first breakout. There we go. So it's only going to generate um, one signal on the first breakout there. And let's see. Next, um, let me find an inside bar. There we go. Good. That wasn't too difficult. So that is an inside bar and let's see if I have any more yep all right here's another inside bar there we go so, okay let's see so an inside bar you know we're just comparing right the highs to the highs and the lows to the lows all right so that's pretty pretty straightforward and simple to do in Bloodhound so we're going to need a comparison solver, right? So we can compare the high and the low price of the current bar to the high and low price of the previous bar. All right, let's, let's see, what should we call this? An inside bar. All right, so um, input A, that's going to be price. So input A will be, you know, the, will be the, the current bar and input B that'll be one bar back right the previous bar and so that is also going to be price as well so let's see here so for a long um, let's do okay so for for price type long let's look at the high price and then for short signals we'll look at the low price and so input B is going to be set up the same way. So high for longs and shorts will be the low price. Uh, but then input B, because it's going to be one bar back, our look back period is going to be set to two. And then the mode, or the I'm sorry, the processing here is just going to be single value, right? And so now, now that we have our inputs all set up, 
we now need to go into the the rules window here or the you know the comparison settings and make sure so once this gets loaded up there you go so we want to make sure this is all set up so remember so the high for input a so you can see in, in brackets it says a and then we have a high in brackets is b so this is the high of input b so the first one is the high of input a so right and so for an inside bar input a needs to have uh, a lesser value than input b so i actually need to reverse this right we want it to be right so the high of the of the inside bar which is input a needs to be less than the high of the previous bar and then for the low prices um it's also opposite so let's switch this right so the low price of the inside bar which is input a needs to be greater than the low price of the previous bar right so there we have it and so if we hit apply we can see and if you look at the the bars here that i circled you'll notice we get a long and a short on that same bar and actually yeah so there we go right here with my cursor that is another inside bar and we can tell because we're getting a long and a short on the same bar so all right so the next step is we need to filter out the long only and the short only bars. So we only want to see the bars that have long and short together on the same bar. So, and to do that, we're going to use a long short modifier, like so. Connect that in. And so on the long short modifier, we're going to use the, we could either use the product mode or the difference there. Um, actually, no, sorry. Um, yeah, it needs to be the product mode there. Um, and so once we should switch the mode to product, there you go. We can see all we see now are both our bars with long and shorts, and those are all the inside bars. So let me name that long short modifier. There you go. So I always like to name it with um, name the function node here after whatever mode you know it it's performing. So and there you go. So there's a few more inside bars, right? And of course, you know I'm on a one minute chart here, um, so so that way we can hopefully uh, if we're lucky. You know, the market will work with us and we might be able to test this signal here um, in real time here with the market. So, all right, so that's the inside bar. So now we need to uh, take the inside bar signal and move it forward onto the next bar. <clears throat> all right. So let's actually stretch this forward a little bit and uh, let's see. Yeah. Okay. We'll work with with this inside bar here, right? So we've identified the inside bar, but we want the signal actually on the next bar here. This is where we want the signal. So we have to move right this long and short forward onto the next bar that's going to generate the signal, and we can do that easily by using a look back node there connect that in and by default the look back node has the displacement set to one and so now we can see right the long and short output has been pushed forward onto the next bar or it's been displaced forward onto the next bar so all right <clears throat> so let's also name this i like to name this for what it's doing, so we're actually just displacing the signal forward by one bar. So there. All right, and so now we need a AND node here. And then we also need to uh, determine whether the next bar, whether price breaks up 
or you know breaks down below the you know above the inside bar high or below the inside bar low so to do that let's see here um, no I can actually take this inside bar comparison solver I could copy it because right the logic is almost exactly the same right we're comparing the the high right of this bar to the high of the previous bar and that's how we can tell that yeah this next bar you know broke up you know um, so it could do that or I could just make a new solver here and well yeah you know for the sake of this being a learning lesson here let's just make a new solver yeah we'll we'll build this solver from scratch so okay I'm going to connect it straight to the result node here first All right so and um, let's see alright so this is gonna this solver here is gonna identify you know the breakout direction so so again, I'm going to set input A to price and set input B to price. And so for a long, we're for a long signal, we need to monitor the highs, right? So on the next bar here, if the high is greater than the inside bar highs, then we know we got a long signal. So all right, and so for a short signal, it's going to be the opposite. So for a low all right, so input B, again, we're going to select the same prices, high and low. And then once again, the look back period needs to be increased to 2. So that way, you know, input B is referencing, right, the previous bar, which is the inside bar. And so there we go. We can see, right, the high of the next bar is higher than the inside bar. And so we get a long signal. And let's see here. Yeah, so on this inside bar, right, the low went lower. <clears throat> and so, right, so we got a short signal. So now what we need to find is we need to find a bar that has a long and a short together. There we go. Uh, where is it? There we go. Yeah. Uh, here's a better one. Yeah. This one's a little op more obvious to see here, right? So we had an inside bar, actually, wait a minute. Um, okay, that's not actually an inside bar. Hold on, let's see. Let me find some inside bars. Here we go, okay, I finally found one there. All right, so here's our inside bar, right? And so that signal bar, yeah, we can see, right? It, it's actually an engulfing bar here. Um, <clears throat> so if we take a look, right, at our, our breakout uh, direction, right? So the, right, the next bar there, yeah, let's squish that over. There we go. Yeah, there, so we're getting along on a short, right? But as we said before, <clears throat> Um, in the explanation of this, you know, of the question here, that, right, right, so um, on the next day here, it, you know, we only want to see the first signal that, that actually executes on that next day. So, um, yeah, so only the first trade um, is executed. So in other words, you know, we only, so in other words, we, we only want to get one signal on that day. So, so what we need to do here is we're going to have to use a toggle node. So that way we only get one signal um, per day um, or one signal per bar. So, all right, so I'm going to have to kind of work through this a little bit. So um, the first thing that we need with the toggle node is the starting state actually needs to start on. Um, so the starting state needs to start on. There. Um, that 
let's see. All right, so actually, luckily, I I have a I have another inside bar that that I yeah that I might be able to work with here. So what I oddly well actually not oddly but sometimes this happens where you kind of need to feed your your signals back into a toggle node because what we so what we need to do what what we're using this toggle node for is that when you know so on the signal bar when we get that first signal right we actually want to turn the toggle node off um, so looking at this toggle node right it's on and so as long as the toggle node is on a signal will get through but then once we do get that signal we need to turn the toggle node off so that we can't get another signal here right and um, you know one of the kind of one of the primary rules of any you know computer software is you can't create loop um, uh, loopbacks right you, um, yeah you you can't create infinite loops so if we try and take you know the signals from this AND node and connect it in to the toggle node you can see we can't actually do that right? we can't actually do that because that would create an infinite loop which is a big no-no uh, with software so let's see here so I'm gonna in this case I can actually do something else here. I can create another AND node like so and then take this other AND node and connect it to the reset there. So I could connect it to the input um, or the reset. Um, to me it just makes more sense that we're connecting it to the reset because we're using the signal to actually turn off the toggle node or kind of reset the toggle node you know but you know whether it's the input or the reset connector you know all of the uh, selections here are the same here so all right so for the toggle node when we get a signal coming into the reset uh, we want to use that to turn the toggle node off and then also um, on opposite signal we want to turn that toggle node off as well right so in the reset the on signal and on opposite signal we're using you know anything that comes into the reset we're using that to turn the toggle node off so let's see actually you know what hold on I am going to put that into the input here um, yeah, set the input to force off like so and actually I'm going to use the reset to turn the toggle node back on so um, yeah so we do it you right so at some point we need to turn that toggle node back on and let's see what can we what should we do here yeah so I'm going to take the signal here All right so I'm going to take the signal from the inside bar right and I'm going to use this uh, to turn the toggle node back on let's see let me rearrange stuff a little bit um, there we go All right, so um, yeah, this should work. I'm just kind of thinking to myself here, trying to analyze this to myself. Yeah, so w whether this is on a, a, an intraday chart or a daily chart, yeah, it should all function the same. So let's kind of go through here um, and recap what we have so far, right? So we have, um, Let's see, let me move this stuff out of the way. There we go. All right. 
So this is our insight bar logic here, right? And so if we connect this in, connect that up, right? So there's our insight bars, right? Marked with the, the white rectangle. But remember, we have a, a function node here, which is displacing the signal forward, right? So this is the inside bar, and then that signal is being displaced forward onto the actual bar that's going to generate the trade signal. Right. So, and then we have this solver here that's going to um, identify when right when the market either breaks to the upside or breaks to the downside right and so and then um right and so when you combine right the inside bar signal with the breakout right then you'll get a signal you know in that direction of the breakout and then once we do get that first signal right we have to feed it um into a toggle node to turn that toggle node off. And if the toggle node is off, then that is going to prevent any more signals getting through this AND node here. Right? And so this, uh, let's see here, um, let's recall this. All right. So so this is the actual trade signal. This other node is a, let's see, what, what, what's a good term for that? Um, right. So this is basically a, a second signal prevention. Um, you know, but you know, as you can see from the leaders, really, this AND node and this AND node Basically, they're generating the same signal, but this one is being, right, the second AND node is being used to turn off the toggle node. Here. And let's see if we actually get lucky enough to see if this, to watch this work. Probably not, you know. Inside bars on a minute chart just don't happen that often. And yeah, already um, the bar that's building already is not an inside bar. Mm. Let's see. All right. I might be able to test this out. Yeah, I'll see if I can construct a setup here to test this out. Um, all right, so I'm going to switch over to a 30 second chart. Then uh, I need to disconnect from the data feed and connect to the simulated data feed. And yeah, I have a feeling the simulated data feed is not going to be nimble enough to actually generate a test. Yeah, it's just not moving fast enough. Look at that. It's just sitting there. No movement on the simulated. All right. Gosh darn it. Well, I'll have to go back to a minute chart so I can get enough movement to form an inside bar. All right. So far, so good. We're on our path to making an inside bar. Yeah, you know what? Even though I can make an inside bar, yeah, the simulated data feed doesn't move fast enough for me to test both a breakout to the upside and the downside. Let's see here. Let me there. Let me move this up. So we can at least get a signal for uh, a breakout to the upside. And let's see. Oh, I'm not getting a signal. All right, what is going on? Yeah, 
that, we got that, and we got that, and oh, is the toggle node not on? Um, oh, right, 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 okay. Uh, that's right. So, yeah, the toggle node turns off, turns off and on in real time. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Yeah, that's right. That's one thing that's unique about the toggle node is it does turn on and off in real time. You know, instead of like waiting for the next bar or something like that. All right. Well, I'll have to see if there's. Yeah, I'm trying to think of if there's you know some alternative to using the toggle node. Right, as a basically, I'm um, using. I was trying. I was hoping to use the toggle node as a signal blocker. Hmm. You know. Yeah. I. I don't think there is actually a way to do this uh, within Bloodhound. Yeah, so, you know, this, yeah, this type of signal, because we're working on the same bar that's forming, um, hmm, oh, okay, 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 actually, hold on. Uh, I think I do have a solution here. All right, so let's get rid of the toggle node. And let me bring in a signal blocker. Yeah, there we go, a signal blocker. Connect that signal in. Let's see. All right, so with the signal blocker, um, mm -hmm. let's see, all right. So with the signal blocker, let's see. So the intro bar signal mode, yeah, I want to lock and hold that signal when it comes in. Um, and let's see here. Block opposite. No, I don't want to block opposite. Um, well, actually, wait. Hmm. 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 Yeah. Sorry, guys. I'm. Yeah. This. This is a real mind bender here. Yeah. I'm coming back to square one. I don't think I actually have a solution for this. Um, yeah. Because you know, once you trade, once you start trying to make decisions within the same bar. Um, you know, that gets you to a whole new level of coding requirements when you're working inside the bar that's building. You know, that, yeah, that introduces a whole new complexity of coding that's required. Um, yeah, and when you get to that, that level of complexity, that basically means you have to write, you know, some complex custom code to do that. So, um, hmm, yeah, I can't think of any way to solve that right now. Yeah, if I can, I'll try and give this some more thought, and maybe next week I might come up with a solution, if there is one, um, and then I can redo this question again for next week, uh, at least the bloodhound part of it. So, so what what I can think of right now um, is that Blackbird actually has a way to restrict the trades. Um, so we can actually use Blackbird to restrict the trades. Yeah, so for now we can just kind of keep this simple um, like this. Yeah, let's move that up. <clears throat> so the bloodhound signals will allow you know both a long and a short on the signal bar um so let's pull this back up all right so 
yeah let's go back right to our our screenshot here so on on this second inside bar day here right on the second uh, signal here right bloodhound will actually generate um, a long signal and a short signal right on that sec on the uh, second day here but we're going to use blackbird to uh, we're going to set up blackbird so that it can only take one trade per day so that's how we you know so that's how we can uh, ensure that um, yeah, let's move that out of the way let's go back to the rules here right so the rules only say you know only the first trade is executed yeah so we can use blackbird settings and say you know only one trade per day is allowed you know so that so if blackbird gets you know a second signal for that day and it'll just ignore it so you know so we'll have to use blackbird to to do this portion here so for now um you know the bloodhound part of it's pretty simple right so you have the inside day signal and then this look back pushes the inside day onto the next bar and then this identifies the breakout this solver down here identifies the actual breakout there so all right and we can actually see that on the chart so let's see yeah this is an inside day So that's an inside day, and this also happened to be an inside bar. Well, not a day, but an inside bar there. And yep, this also was definitely a inside bar. All right. Well, yep. That's um, bars. We're going to go with this question. Uh, that really actually, that's yeah, as far as we need to go with this question. All right. So, yeah. So I guess while I'm waiting on the next question to come in here, yeah, I'm going to play around um, with my signal blocker idea and see if something comes to mind. <clears throat> Hmm. Yeah, it seems like the signal blocker gets really close, you know, to being able to prevent a signal in the opposite direction on the same bar. But, yeah, but it's not really going to work because, you know, so for example, right, um, yeah, let's see here. So, for example, on this bar here, <clears throat> yeah, we'll take this one for example. Right. So we did get right a breakout short, um, and so the signal blocker right would allow the short signal to get through, and you can see since there is no long output, right, the signal blocker is missing a long output right so that you know would normally prevent a long signal from occurring on that bar <clears throat> um, but the issue is is that well if you know you know if if this and node um, you know if price moved up this right this and node would, would then generate a long signal but then and then that long signal would come in and um, and uh, set up the signal blocker to also then block long signals um, so the signal blocker basically would fill this in with a long output allowing a long signal to get through yeah so hmm. maybe 
Maybe the relational node might do it. Um, that's it. No, no. Relational node would not do it. So, yeah. All right. Well, I'm back to square one again. Let's see here. All right. Looks like uh, Freddie might have some follow up questions for me. Um, Freddie's asking, is it possible to use a counter to count the signals? Yes, but and use it for an input to the toggle node. Um, OK, yeah, Freddie, I think I understand what you're getting at. Um, so the answer is no, because uh, most people usually don't bother to read, you know, um, you know, the documentation page on how Bloodhound works. And so let me pull this up here so everybody can see it. All right, let me pull up the documentation page here. There we go. So if we go into Bloodhound, and let's see here. I think it's the How Bloodhound Works page right here. Um, yeah, yeah, this is the page here. Uh, and so basically, you know, the part that we're interested in is this page, you know, explains that the long output is calculated totally separately from the short output. They are completely independent calculations of each other um, because that's how fuzzy logic works. So the fuzzy logic for a long signal needs to be independent for the fuzzy logic calculation of a short signal. Yeah, so they're separate, they're separate calculations. So sure, you can count the longs, but that's not going to do anything. Oh, well, actually, you can't count the signal counter count signals from bar to bar to bar. It's not counting signals inside of a bar. You know, again, that is a whole different level of complex programming. Um, you know, and you have to get into customized coding in order to count events that happen inside of the same bar. That's a whole new level of complexity there. Um, you know, so Bloodhound is designed to track events from one bar to the next bar to the next bar. So once you start trying to um, track, you know, conditions that may happen multiple times inside the same bar, um, that's where basically Bloodhound logic is gonna come to an end. Um, and you can only go so far um, with with Bloodhound when you're trying to track internal events. You know, at that point, you know, you're going to have to start doing your own custom coding um, and you'll quickly discover it gets pretty darn hairy and complex when you do that. Uh, so, yeah. So the signal counter counts signals from one bar to the next bar to the next bar. Um, you know, and actually, if you look at... You know, if we pull up the signal counter there, you know, if you, and if you pay attention, um, you know, to the inputs, right, the, the, you know, the counting up doesn't really give you any kind of clue. It just says, okay, what are you counting up to? But the look back period, you know, that's basically a period, right? So, um, you know, Whenever you see period, that means you're looking back on multiple bars. So you can see that basically the, the signal counter is, you know, trying to count, you know, as many events signal that you're looking for within the look back period. Right. So really, if you're trying to count, you know, signals inside the same bar, you know, that has a look back period of zero. Oops. Yeah, that has a look back period of zero. And you can't use a look back period of zero on the signal counter. So, yeah, you'll see, right? It's going to reset itself there if you try and go to zero. All right, so Freddy's got another follow up question here. Um, hmm, I see what you're getting at. Yeah, you know, I was trying to only do this with, with one data series, one time frame, just to keep it, you know, keep it simple. Um, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah, so what you're bringing up in theory will work, 
99% of the time, of course, there, it is always possible that you could get two signals um, out of Bloodhound. Theoretically, it's possible. Yeah, all right. So what Freddy's suggesting here is uh, setting up Bloodhound to operate on multiple uh, time frames here. So that way, so yeah, so to kind of illustrate, let's go back. Yeah, here we go. So, so the inside bar, right, that would be calculated on a daily time frame. And then on the signal bar, right, or the, sig the signal slash breakout bar, you know, that we could, that could be, that could operate on uh, intraday minute chart. And so that way with an intraday minute chart, you know, in theory, or typically, right, typically it's gonna take several minutes you know, for the market to break out, um, right? So, yeah, so going back here, all right, so back to this example here, um, you know, it probably took a while for the market to move up and break out to the upside. And then it would probably took, you know, many, many bars for the market to move back down and break out to the short side. Right, and so if we have multiple bars um, in between, you know, the long signal and the short signal, yeah, then we could do that. So, yeah, so, but again, that is um, kind of overcomplicating it. Um, I would much rather just let Blackbird, you know, uh, use Blackbird to just say one trade per day and just be done with it, right? Uh, instead of overcomplicating it, you know, the best solution is always the simplest solution. <clears throat> so, um, so we could do that, um, <clears throat> you know, if someone really, yeah, if, you know, so if somebody wanted to see, you know, the signals on an intraday chart, you know, that is possible uh, to do that. So I guess... I guess since I don't have any other questions coming in, I guess what the heck, let's let's go ahead and entertain that as as a question. Um, so, all right, yeah, so we're gonna take this daily chart question and we're gonna break it into uh, a more granular set of signals here uh, so that we'll actually get signals on a intraday chart, on a one minute chart, all right. So let's see here, let's, all right, so first thing I need to do um, is, let's see, I need to add a daily time frame here. So, and, and you know, this also kind of becomes a limiting factor because, you know, when you're working with, you're adding multiple time frames and with daily time frames, uh, Ninja Trader really kind of limits you um, as to the exact data that goes into your daily bar, All right? Um, so that's kind of re another reason why I wanted to keep this simple and keep this all working on the daily time frame. Uh, you know, per this image, right? This is all working on a daily on a daily time frame, and you can control you know, what actually goes, the data that goes into generating these daily bars, you know, with this. So once you go into a multi time frame, you know, an intraday data and a daily data, you, you lose that ability to control uh, the data that goes into the daily bars. So, so anyways, right. So if you don't understand what I'm saying and you need more information, um, then, you know, go to Ninja Trader support and they can help explain how their data series works, right? How their charts and how the daily bars operate. So that that's a Ninja Trader thing, you know, so you would need to go to Ninja Trader support to get, you know, why that to get, you know, to get help with understanding, you know, why that is with Ninja Trader and stuff. So, 
All right, so um, so for Bloodhound, this secondary time frame here needs to be a daily chart. So let's put this on a day, a one day chart. There we go. Okay, so one day chart. Let's see here. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to make a copy of this logic template. And let's rename this. So the second one here is using two time frames there. All right. Um, and let's see here. Um, so I need a inside bar calculation that's coming from the daily time frame. So I will have to make a copy of that and then move that down onto the daily time frame there. All right, so let me get rid of this solver and then go to right my solvers panel here and I can drag the inside bar uh, solver from the daily time frame drag it on here there right and you can see right the little um, annotation on the top left there it says daily so so we know that this inside bar solver is operating on the daily time frame and also oh you know actually um hmm, yeah this brings up a good point here so one thing that I did miss is, um, right, so on the single time frame system here, one thing that I did overlook is that the, oh, wait, sorry, no, that's right. I'm using the look back to compensate for that. Okay, never mind. I didn't make a mistake. Okay, sometimes it's easy to overthink stuff. All right, so we have our inside bar coming from the daily time frame. And so this breakout, oh, you know what? Yeah, that's right. Um, yeah, we can't mix and match time frames um, in the comparison solver. So, oh, okay, never mind. Um, so let's see here. So we're actually going to have to, um, yeah, so for this breakout bar, uh, let me make a copy and paste a copy of it down here. There. Let's see. All right. So we're going to be going to be. So for this new breakout bar, we're going to be comparing the high, right, um, and the low to the uh, what do they call this. Um, the prior day uh, open high low indicator right so we're gonna have to use an indicator right that's tracking the prior days um, open uh, hot well mainly what we're interested in, right is the prior days high and low prices there yeah. so we'll have to adjust this Basically, yeah, this solver here that's identifying the breakout to use an indicator, right? Because so, um, you know, currently you can't mix and match time frames between input A and input B. So currently the entire solver is running on one time frame only. So maybe sometime in the future we we can we can adjust that. Um, so, but currently, you know, the entire solver is running on one time frame. You know, unless you're using an indicator to bring in other time frames, right? Um, and so that's kind of what we're doing here. So um, the okay, there you go. So input B is set to the indicator value. And we're going to use the prior day indicator, right, that to capture and track the prior days high and low prices, based, right? So the prior day high and lows are going to be the high and lows for the inside bar. There we go. So prior day um, open high, low close, 
and we are interested in the prior high for a long signal and the prior low here for a short signal. There. And, all right, let's activate that. Oh, and also, all right, since we added a secondary time frame, we need to reload the chart. Let's get that reloaded. There we go. And actually, let me let me get rid of my simulated data feed, and let's go back to uh, the real data feed. All right, so I'm going to have to pull up another chart here so we can see the daily bars. All right, there we go. So we can see, yeah, that yesterday's low was quite a bit higher. And so we are roughly below that price. Well, let's also, sorry, we should also put the indicator on the chart as well. So we have a, a visual aid. There you go. Prior day, open high, low. And let's see, we don't actually need to see the close and the open is off. We just want to see the high and the low. Um, all right, that should do it. Yeah, there we go. All right, so whenever, right, whenever the market is below, right, the low, we're getting a signal there. Okay, so now... to stretch this out quite a bit there we go all right so now that we're working with multiple bars here yeah now we can um, limit this so that we only get one signal uh, per day on the intraday chart so hmm let's see yesterday was not actually an inside bar All right, so that was an inside bar. <clears throat> so yesterday we should see a signal, but not today. Let's see what. Let's see what we're looking at here. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, we're just looking at the one solver. Okay, so let's connect that up, and let's look at the signals. There. Okay, that's better. All right. Yeah. So no signals today because yesterday was yesterday was not an inside bar right so we have to go back to yesterday so yesterday should have signals should have short signals because um, let's see Wednesday so Tuesday yeah Tuesday was an inside bar um, and Monday was an inside bar so let's see yeah so we should I'm a, expecting to see some signals there let's see um, all right so let's see what's going on here let's troubleshoot this figure out why we're not getting signals uh, I'm gonna switch over to let's see some five minute bars there we go that way I can see more data. Yeah, all right. And I better load, yeah, I better load some more data on my chart there. There we go. Okay. Yep. So there you go. Sometimes you just don't have enough data on your chart, you know, for things to calculate correctly. There we go. All right. Yeah, so we can see now, right? So we can see that, um, right? That just based on the prior day um, high and low prices, right? So that was an inside bar, and this day was an inside bar, right? And we have um, a long and a short output for those inside bars there. Actually, 
there we go. That's what we should be looking at. Yeah, remember, we should be looking at the long short modifier, which is filtering out the inside bars. There we go. So there's our inside bars. Okay, so now when we look at the signals, so now that we had enough data on the chart, now, there we go. Now we're getting that short signal there. So. All right, so let's focus in on this. Yeah. All right. So over here where we get, you know, our first short signal, right? We just want to see a signal on the first bar and then block all the rest for the re remainder of the day. Yeah. What the heck? Um, um, again, I'm just going to keep this simple here. So I'm going to use the signal blocker. Connect that in, connect that in. And so what's critical with the signal blocker is that we need to check block opposite signals, right? Because we want to make sure that when that short signal comes in, that we're blocking the long signals there, all right? <clears throat> so, and then let's see here. So then we need to just kind of figure out, you know, how many you know, how many bars, you know, do we need to block signals for? Um, and so, you know, if we're on a one minute chart, you know, then it, it's possible that, um, well, yeah, if we're on a one minute chart, then there's 1,440 1, bars per day, right? So there's 1,440 minutes in a day. So on a one minute chart, there's that many number of bars, you know, so if we're on a, you know, five minute chart, right, then obviously there's a lot less. So just to be safe, I'm going to put, you know, four, oops, um, let's see here. There we go, 1440, right, so that would cover um, a daily or I'm sorry, that would cover a one minute chart. There we go. And actually I can I can take one bar off. <laughs> there we go. So yeah, so I can knock it down to 1439. Um you know to be technically correct. So all right. Um but then also we do need to reset the signal blocker. Uh, right, because what happens if, you know, if we think about this, um, right, you know, what happens if the signal, you know, comes midday, right? And so, you know, so if we're blocking for, you know, 1,400 bars, right, that would mean it's blocking way into the next day, way into the next day. And so it would be, it would be blocking you know, it could possibly block the first signal because we have no idea on the following day, you know, when that signal might come in, might come in early, might come in late, right? So what we need to do is when the day resets, right? When the day resets, we also need to reset the signal blocker as well. <clears throat> Um, so let's see here. How should we do that? Um, yeah, there's a couple of ways we can do that. Yeah, we should probably have the, the daily reset line up with the indicator that we're using, right? So we can see that the indicator, uh, right, the prior day open, high, low, close indicator, you know, it, it, um, it is using NinjaTrader's, um, uh, what do you call it? NinjaTrader's trading hours, right? So we can see that this, the the high from one day to the high of the next, um, right? It, it adjusts using the trading hours. And so we should use that same, um, that same uh, time for resetting the signal blocker. So, um, Right, so let's see here. Um, 
All right. So this comparison solver is already using the prior day open high low close uh, for input B. Uh, so that's kind of saving me a little bit of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this solver and paste it down here. And then I'm going to rename this here. All right, we're going to repurpose this this copy as our daily reset here. All right, so now input A is also going to be switched to an indicator value, and we're also going to use the prior day. Let's see, did I go past it? Yes, I did. There we go. There's our prior day open, high, low, close indicator. Um, and let's see. Uh, yeah, let's... I guess it doesn't matter. Um, yeah, I'll just use the prior open here. And I'll... Ex you'll You'll see what I'm doing here in just a moment. It's not it's not going to be clear quite yet. And so input B, I'm also going to switch to the prior open as well. All right. And then also input B is going to be one, one bar back. Um, and already you can kind of see, right? Look, I got a short signal there, right? When... when um, the highs readjust and the lows readjust, right? Same here, right? The highs readjusted, the lows readjust, and we can see that a long signal there and a short signal there. Um, so, although actually, what I want to do is um, I'm going to use the not equals. So technically, when when the prior open for input A does not equal the prior open for input B, that's when I want to see a signal. And oh, let's see here. Yeah, all right. Uh, open is on. Open's on. Show open. Hmm. Well, I'm not seeing what I'm expecting. Maybe I'm not understanding the indicator correctly. Um, hmm. All right. Well, let me just try a different plot here. Let's try the prior close. All right. Let's try that instead. Try the prior close. Hmm. That's not working as expected either. See, it's kind of like it's comparing two different prices. Let's see, prior show closes on, All right? <clears throat> and the show closes on. Hmm. What I'm expecting to see is just a single bar with a long and a short uh, output. Hmm. Let's see. Well, it was it was working like that. So okay. All right. Well, that's working for us. Um, Um. 
And we try and use the, you know, not equals again. <laughs> All right. Let's try using the equals. Hmm. Well, weird. Hmm. We'll have to investigate this and see what's going on here. But at least now we can see, there we go. So on the day, we're not getting an output there. Yep, so when the day changes, we're missing an output. So now I need to invert that. There we go. All right. So there we go. So so whenever, you know, so I'm we're so I'm using the prior day, you know, open high low close indicator, and I'm identifying if either the high prices change or the low prices change. You know, and when they do, I know that, you know, it's the this the indicator is switched from one day to the next day. Right. So, um, yeah, looking at the inputs, right? So input A, that's the current bar. And input B is looking at the indicator, but one bar back. Right. So that's how you um, can I, I that's how you can use this indicator to identify when the day changes is you're comparing let me grab an arrow right so we're comparing uh, this day to the previous day there right and so yeah so when they don't equal each other then you know the day changed so there we go so now Connect that in, and connect that in. So here's our daily reset. You know, and this is just kind of one way that you know I guess you could come up with to figure out when the day changes. Um, you know, and again, the reason why I'm using the the prior day open high low close is because we're using it. You know, in our uh, calculation we're using it in our logic to identify when the current day prices break out of the prior days high and low right the, and again the prior day high and low indicator is simulated the high and low prices from the daily bars And let's see here. All right, so I am so let me just finish setting up the signal blocker here. Hmm. Well, yeah. So I'm I'm not getting the expected results from the signal blocker. So let me. Hold on, let me um, reload the chart here. All right, there we go. There we go. Okay, great. Let me shrink things up a little bit. There. All right, so here's our first inside day. And then we had another inside day. Um, I'm sorry. Ah, I gotta remember the these um, the, the indicators coming from yesterday, so I'm t <laughs> easy to get all mixed up here. All right, there we go. So that was the first inside day, and then this was the second inside day. There we go. All right. So this is our inside day. And here is our breakout right here. There we go. So that's our breakout right there. And we got a single signal. All right. The first bar signal there. There we go. Okay. And let me take one last look at the signal blocker and make sure we got everything. You know, so lock and hold. Block opposite signals. Okay, great. 
Um, one thing I like to do with this signal blocker here is a little tip is I kind of like to put in like a, a 0.1 value for the actively blocking there. Um, and well. Hmm, that did something weird. You know, I wonder if I have Windows updates waiting on my machine. You know, I've always noticed that when I get weird things from Bloodhound, it always seems to be a Windows update is waiting. So let me let me check, see if I have some updates. Well, yeah, it does want to install another update, but I don't think that should be interfering. Hmm. Well. Uh, let me reload the chart one more time. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. Cool. That, there you go, that is what I'm expecting to see. So if you look at Bloodhound's output, right, you can see there's a little partial, um, you know, short and long output. And I like to do that because that is telling me when the signal blocker is blocking signals so that that that's how i can verify that's how we can get visual feedback that the signal blocker is actively blocking signals right now okay so there you go back to the signal blocker so there you go um so that was my little tip is yeah i, I like to put in like a point 0.1 or point 0.2 so i can see when the signal blocker um, is actively blocking there, you know, as the name of that output implies there, right? it's actively blocking. And then when the next day comes along, I can see the signal blocker um, stops blocking, right? So that output disappears, telling me that, all right, the signal blocker is ready for the next signal to come in. So, yeah. so there we have it. Okay. There you go. There's an alternative way, a little more complex for sure, but um, an alternative way s to get the same type of system working with an intraday chart. All right, so there you go. So there's the original system is designed to work on a, a daily chart, and then this um, secondary system here is designed to work on it intraday chart so and again both systems are designed to work with the calculate set to on price change or on each tick so that way you get the signal immediately so as soon as let's shrink this up here So when your calculate is set to on price change or on each tick, right? As soon as the market crosses, um, right, the prior day indicators low price or the high price, as soon as the market crosses that, you'll get that signal immediately. Yeah, Freddie's just commenting here. Yep, the prior day open high low closes for the whole day exactly. Yes. Yep. Um, but then again, so are the daily bars. So, right, the, those those daily bars are for the whole day. So um, the indicator will match the daily bars. Let's see, Fred is asking, is the displacement for one day or one minute? Neither. The displacement function works on a bar-by-bar -bar basis. You know, so if you want more information on the displacement, um, that's a ninja trader function. Uh, so let's see here. Let's pull this up. Yeah. So going back to our daily reset, this displacement is ninja traders displacement function. All right. So if you pull up, so if I open up the prior day indicator, right? So if you look at the prior day indicator, right? Every indicator has this displacement setting here. And so you can displace an indicator forward. X number of bars or backwards. So that's NinjaTrader's function, uh, displacement function there. So, and so I guess, yes. And so 
the this displacement yeah to be more specific the way the displacement works is it always works on the default time frame so whatever the default time frame is for bloodhound that is what the displacement is so if bloodhound's default time frame is a one minute chart or a five minute chart then your displacement is going to be one minute or five minute so if bloodhound is running on a daily bar then your displacement is one day hmm let's see so all right so freddie's commenting here so yeah i didn't get what i expected with the daily reset node yeah on the input uh so he guesses that is the reason why no no because um Right, so the daily reset again, it's it's using the prior day open, high, low, close indicator, right? And of course, the indicator is running on the five minute chart, right? Intraday, and so, right? So we're so the daily reset comparison solver. So remember, this is a comparison solver, right? Um, so this displacement going from a displacement of zero uh, to a displacement of one so that's only a one bar difference between the two different indicators being compared um, right so what that does is it doesn't matter what the time frame is you know the fact that so what what this comparison solver is doing is input a is um, you know input a is looking at the current bar and input B is one bar back so input A is is the square you think of it as the as the square it's the current bar input B is one bar back so that that's the circle there the ellipses and then eventually what happens is right the current bar is there and man, I wish they would make it easier to grab small objects. There we go. And then, right, and then input B is one bar back, and now they they don't equal each other. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to find is is when um, the current bar doesn't equal the previous bar. And yeah, for some reason that was not working as expected. I'm not sure why. <clears throat> so. Um, because I do this all the time with the swing highs and lows indicator to identify when a new swing point is identified, and it works all the time. So I'm not sure why it's not working with the prior day open, high, low, close indicator. Um, yeah, that was a bit un unexpected. So, but anyways, you know, I just um, fiddled around, um, you know, with with the comparison solver, you know. Uh, relational you know condition and I got it to work so let's see phrase asking was it inverted activated in the comparison solver it is now to get it to work correctly um, I'm kind of have yeah I'm having to use the invert I'm going about this in a odd fashion atypical fashion so you know if you look at the comparison solver right if you look at the rules window I'm using the equals and um, you know what I really want is not equals, so I'm using the equals. Uh, so if I take the inverted off, um, hold on, let's connect that up. There we go. Let's connect this up, right? So, <clears throat> so using the equals comparison, right there. So whenever the plots equal each other, you know, yeah, I, right, I get you know, a long and short output. And then when they do not equal each other, right, this is what I'm trying to identify, is, right, when they don't equal each other right there. Um, so, since that's what I want to identify, yeah, when I invert it, now it's working. So, all right, looks like Freddy's up to speed now. Yeah, well, some weird things were going on with, uh, building this system it, it did kind of
kind of muddy the waters quite a bit. <laughs> I'm trying to understand, you know, uh, what I built and why I built it. So for sure. Mm -hmm.